way that I like to organize my tax returns is we have an inbox and an in progress. So these are all the new ones that we get from data entry. Uh, Jared helps us out with data entry, uh, which is a crucial step just to make sure that we're capturing every dollar that you earn, every dollar that's withheld, because at the end of the day, every dollar counts. Um, so all of those come into my inbox and then we'll um, add things like rentals, small businesses, uh, things that aren't your typical um, tax form uh, that require a little more nuance. Um, and so that's everything in this pile. I love when this pile is small. It means I'm doing an all right job. Um, and then we also have a few missing info stacks. We organize things by department. Um, we obviously can't have one person following up with everyone. So we try to divvy up that responsibility. Um, and then down here is ready for review. Uh, Nathan is our CPA. So as such, um, he has that certified public accountant license. Everything gets reviewed by Nathan. Um, and that just makes sure that everything is accurate. Um, and sometimes he has additional uh, information due to his correspondence with some of our clients. So yeah, that's how we organize the folders. Um, and then as soon as Nate reviews them, then they're gonna move forward to Janice where she'll send your documents for signature, um, collect the payment for the invoice, uh, and then she'll transmit those returns as well. So uh, we go from meeting to data entry to preparation, review, and then signature and uh, transmission to the IRS or any state uh, Department of Revenue. But yeah, we, we try to just take it one day at a time. The key, what I've found to be really helpful is to just make a to-do list at the beginning of every day and I start to go through, I put all the returns in order that I'm gonna do. And the really the best way to tackle a tax return is to just go page by page, um, which doesn't sound very fun, but it ensures you don't miss anything. Um, you know, go line by line. It's the details, um, the devil's in the details at the end of the day. So we go through every single line on every page to make sure that we aren't missing anything. Sure. Um, I would say the, the main difference is people that don't have a business, their questions are always, you know, I'm a high W-2 income earner, what can I do to not pay these ungodly taxes? And mm -hmm. I think our tax system government has been set up in a way that if you are a high W-2 income earner, while that's great and, you know, you're quote unquote living the American dream, you are going to pay your taxes and there's no way around it. So I I'd always try to press upon people um, in 2024 starting your own business in my mind is one of the best things that you can do. Um, you know, I, I think with individuals, the, the difficult part is always, I don't want to start a business. I don't want a rental property. I don't want to invest in a real estate syndication group. Like I don't want to do all these things, but I don't want to pay mm -hmm. taxes. It's those conversations of that just doesn't work in this country. So I, I think it's, you know, being able to explain that in like an eloquent way of, you know, you actually have to do one of these things. And if you don't, um, you're kind of just going to keep paying the same thing that you've paid repetitively. Um, so that's the biggest difference I see from business owners. Um, because as a business owner, you've already taken that step to do something in terms of, you know, starting a business, investing in real estate and things like that. So the the overall tone of the conversation is definitely different with business owners and real estate investors because they're looking for like that next tier of strategy where it's, you know, like I did my business, I got a rental property. Now they want kind of those conversations of, you know, let's put your wife on your payroll Max fund her 401k, max fund your 401k. Hire your kids. Hire your kids. They won't be taxed up to the standard mm -hmm. deduction. So it's, it's all of those types of like, I always call them like secondary level conversations. I think that first level is always get a rental property, start a business. It's those types of things. Do something. Do something. Right off Do, and, and I've kind of always, you know, we have clients that we've met with five, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. And they ask the same thing 
every every year and and you know that's what we're here for that's what they're paying us for they're they're mm-hmm. paying us um you know we have we have some clients that you know they're paying us because i know they look forward to the meeting right they could probably do their taxes on TurboTax, but you know and i know this they schedule their meeting on the calendar they look forward to it um mm-hmm. and that's okay for some people but um, I try to give the most value for the meetings and when you give that value and it's, you know, I don't right. want to do that, I don't want to do that, right. you kind of are left with the meeting of, you know, you're basically, Box. yeah, you're basically paying for this just to kind of have a 30 minute conversation with somebody and, mm-hmm. you know, every once in a while, you know, when crypto's up, they ask about crypto, but when yeah. crypto's down, you know, you never hear anybody talk about it, right. which is actually the opposite of as you know, if when crypto's mm-hmm. down is when you should be asking which one should I, which one should I you know, buy? get into. Yeah. Um, so it's it's almost the opposite of, of what it should be. But um, that's that's the biggest yeah. difference I've seen. Um, business owners now that I've noticed, people are trying to get into real estate more. Sierra. Everything is task driven. Awesome. in the CRM or else I would be a mess. Yeah. Perfect. First thing I just come in and look at the CRM, what do I have to do today? And then you just start going and down. And then I do it, yeah. Even Perfect. if I have a task outside of like the normal deals, I Perfect. create one. What's the biggest thing For that's me, on your nerves? when okay. clients send in their books that they think are done and reconciled and they're not Mm -hmm. (laughs) they require a lot of work i actually love doing it yeah like especially a whole year at a time i love to just sit and like zone out and just get that done because it's easy for me you know like taxes are a little bit more difficult and more demanding a little bit more challenging there right where bookkeeping i've been doing it for so long it's it's a little bit of a break yeah so it's kind of nice to have i don't mind it at all it's just um, trying to get that done in the short time period can be a little bit stressful. I, I've been saying for a while that we're headed for a Great Depression and I know that the current administration doesn't like that because they keep right. telling us how great things are. Right. I the last time I saw people owe the amount of taxes that are owed this year versus the amount of cash people had mm-hmm. was 2008 2009. So take that for what it's worth. I I can look at the charts and tell you we're headed for a, for a little bit different liquidity. Gotcha. Uh, because when taxes are owed, liquidity gets stressed. And well, it's not that it's not that the taxes are owed. Because when people are making money, taxes are owed. What's happened is people have intentionally lowered the amount of tax payments they make during the year. So they haven't made estimates. They haven't done payroll. They haven't funded tax planning I- items like the defined benefits. Mm-hmm. You fund those, and it will reduce your taxes for yeah, yeah. later on. And those things haven't been funded. So to me, that that says there's a shortage of liquidity. And I know there is because banks aren't lending. There's no more free money. You can't get loans at 2% anymore. Credit cards, go try to get a credit card right now for 0% or introductory rate or right. transfer something from one credit card or another to zero. All the games we've played over the years. Sorry, Dave Ramsey. We've played those games and make them work. Um, we used to use people's tax dollars and not fund them because the IRS interest rate was 3.5%. And so we wouldn't fund taxes and then we'd go on plans or we'd pay it. It's eight and a half now. So all those liquidity games we played are gone. So that's, and then it, you know, it can't last forever. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a nut kick. I'm sorry, it is. It's like Jenga. You can only, you can get, like you can get a soft kick maybe and not <laughs> heave over, but you get a couple soft kicks or four or five, you're gonna. Death by a thousand cuts. Death right? by a thousand cuts, yep. Okay. Or a thousand kicks. In my analogy. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, tax season, Nathan, for you. You got it. Taking it one day at a time. Finance X. Finance X. Superstars. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in to next week's video.